If you're bust up and then you choose to walk back and re-engage with this person who's not even in your grill fighting your combative anymore, this is not self-defense. You are now fighting. And when you're fighting, there's a winner and there's a loser. When you're in self-defense, often there can be two losers, especially if you don't know what you're doing. And that's why we have to have these reality checks. COVID is over, don't know if you noticed. The flights are back, we're going abroad, tempers are high, flights are being canceled, and things are going down. There was a video came out recently of an individual losing his temper at an airport, a member of staff losing their temper at that airport. Let's see what's going on there in this reality check. Hi there guys, Jay Cooper here again with another reality check for you. I have a baggage handler and a football player getting into it. Now, what a lot of people didn't see was the video that went on immediately before this. But let's get into the underlying principles here. We have a customer that's having an argument with a baggage clerk, and we have a baggage clerk that decides to get into it with the customer. When we talk about combat, when we talk about self-defense, it's very important we know what the paradigms are that we're operating under. What is self-defense for a police officer isn't going to be self-defense for a school teacher. What's self-defense for a school teacher isn't going to be self-defense for someone that's had six pints of Guinness at a nightclub at four o'clock in the morning. Everything is entirely situational dependent. This is why when you train, you train to purpose. It's pointless training in a military combat system that's designed to kill people silently if you're basically going to go to church every Sunday and you're worried about the collection plate going missing. So you have to make sure that what you're doing fits your purpose. That's never more so true than when it comes to the law. This individual here has taken it upon himself to be judged during execution for the airport. Let me stress something. This ain't his job. I'm not saying he doesn't have a right to defend himself. I'm not saying he doesn't have a right to defend others if they're in physical danger. What I am saying is he doesn't have the right to then start enforcing things physically which are way outside of his paradigm, especially when there's security and specifically police officers, four of which are personal friends of mine, who are there to do that job for him. So right from the get-go, when we talk about this as being a self-defense situation, eh, it kind of is, it kind of isn't. You can't start something and then claim self-defense, rule number one. So in the main video that we're watching here, we see an individual that's clearly agitated, clearly angered. And if you look at the earphones dangling down, clearly something has gone on prior to this. Now, what the setup for this was, this individual was actually using a uh, wheelchair to carry his baggage on. I'm not saying that's a good thing, but this is the difference between legal, ethical, and moral. Legal is what the law and the state says you can and can't do. Moral is what you personally will choose to do. Ethical are those little rules in society that keeps us functioning. Is it a good idea to use a wheelchair to actually transport your baggage on? No, that's clearly not what they're designed for. Is it actually against the law? No. In the same way, returning your shopping cart isn't against the law. It's just if you don't do it, you're a piece of shit. When we look at things like this, this is where it becomes an ego battle. So the one guy saying, hey, excuse me, sir, you can't do that. And the other guy saying, well, whatever, I'm moving my bag. So straight away, I'm not saying the guy's in the right for moving his baggage on the wheelchair. Let's get that right. But if you watch the preceding video to this, the baggage handler actually initiates the physical contact piece. There's a little bit of pushing, a little bit of wailing of punches there. Certainly nothing of any real effectiveness. Probably should come check me out for classes. If you check out the link in the description below, you'll actually find the earlier video. And in that video, you'll actually see many people saying it's a CFL player that initiated this confrontation because it shows him swinging. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And that's what everyone sees because it's a shiny object. That's the main piece of that video. What they're missing is a small 
small split second piece at the beginning when you can actually see the baggage clerk initiate the physical confrontation by putting that hand up there. He got in the other guy's face. He initiated the physical, which then triggered the punches that went down afterwards. Now again, I'm not saying it necessarily required that level of response, but I understand. The baggage handler in this video as we're coming in here is doing classically what we call the monkey dance. Both of them are doing the posturing. Yeah, yeah, the adrenaline's up there, they're angered. The guy, the baggage clerk, clearly done a little bit of training. He's confident enough within himself that he drops his hands down here. He's coming in on nice and low. When the guy's angered at what has transpired before, he chooses that moment, as Charlie Murphy himself said, you can't go slapping no man. Well, you can, they used to do that back in the day, but then you'd have a duel. Someone would have to die afterwards. So in this instance, he then chooses to re-engage in a physical confrontation, which precipitates what follows. He advances into the space, the individual's walking away from him. This is important to remember. He's not engaged with him, he's engaged with someone else, and he blindsides him. Bam! That slap comes in. He smiles, he laughs, there's a cockiness about him. And what? The hands are there, calling the guy on, let's go for it. The hands then come up, now we're having the ego fight, now the monkey dance is a fallen ritual, and boom! That shot lands right in his jaw. Then the second shot's coming in, puts the guy right over that desk. So he clearly started something he couldn't finish. The true sad thing here is he didn't land on the luggage belt and then go transport himself up the ramp. That would have been epic. When we look at a situation like this, this guy started this, both in the initial video that most people haven't seen and in this second video when he's walking off, bang, gets a slap to the face. What's surprising about this video is the fact that the CFL player was actually charged. Several reasons I can think for this. One of which is there's a standard policy, which if you start a problem in an airport, you're gonna get charged for it. The gentleman who's the baggage handler instantly should have been fired and he should have been charged too. If you're stepping outside the realms of what your role is and what your job is, you're responsible for the actions on your own outside of that. This isn't a corporate liability anymore. This isn't a corporate responsibility anymore. You choose to do this, you step way outside of your own lines. Notice he then walks back asking for some more. Our players then, you want some more? You want some more? Let's go some more. I've already knocked your ass down once before and you want another piece of this. The guy's still doing the arm splay. Come on, come on, let's see what you got. This is not self-defense. This is not self-defense anymore. If you've been knocked down once already, if you're bust up and then you choose to walk back and re-engage with this person who's not even in your grill fighting your combative anymore, this is not self-defense. You are now fighting. And when you're fighting, there's a winner and there's a loser. When you're in self-defense, often there can be two losers, especially if you don't know what you're doing. And that's why we have to have these reality checks. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, smash that subscribe button, maybe with an open-handed slap if you're so inclined. Please feel free to share this video on any social media that you have. Remember our lesson to take away from today. You can do what you need to do, provided you need to do it. Let's remind you all of the Facebook group, Aftermath, the fight after the fight, where you'll see me do commentaries probably a bit more depth than this on uh, some of the videos. I'll answer any questions you have, and I'll post things of interest. That's on the Facebook group, Aftermath, the fight after the fight. I'll see you on there, and I'll see you on here very, very soon.